Global atmospheric circulation is basically the way that the winds travel around the planet. Wind is created when air moves from high pressure to low pressure. The best way for me to explain this is for you to imagine blowing up a balloon. When you've blown up the balloon, the air inside is under high pressure. It's squeezing to get out. And when you pop a balloon, the air will race out. It moves from high pressure to low pressure and the balloon will fly across the room because basically you've created wind. OK, in terms of our planet, winds move around the planet in a, pa in a pattern and that's what we're going to look at now. OK, the diagram in front of you, you've got a picture of the Earth here and we've got the sun over here. Around the centre of the Earth, we have the equator, which is a line of latitude and the equator is at zero degrees. As we head north, we get to 30 degrees north here, at this point 60 degrees north, and then finally the North Pole, which we say is at 90 degrees north. These numbers come from the fact that if you were to put a pencil here on the centre of the Earth and draw a line up to this line of latitude, that angle there would be 30. Similarly, if you drew a line up to here, the angle would be 60, and then up to the North Pole. OK, we also have the Tropic of Cancer here and the Tropic of Capricorn, which are the dotted lines that you can see. OK, let's look at the sun. The sun beats down onto the Earth's surface. Now, at this point here, this is the shortest distance to the sun, and also the rays of the sun would be very concentrated. So this would be, um, the surface would be getting very, very hot. The sun's rays are very intense here. In contrast, at this point here, the sun's surface is slightly further away, but more importantly, the sun's rays, when they strike the surface of the Earth, um, they cover a much greater distance, a much bigger surface area, and therefore they are weaker, they're not as intense. Back to the equator. The sun's rays beat down and they warm the Earth's surface, and in turn, the Earth's surface warms the air above it through convection. The air here then starts to rise. It rises through convection. It rises because it's warm. This creates low pressure at the surface. As the air rises, any moisture in it will cool down, condense and form droplets, which basically forms clouds. So over the course of the day, you would experience clouds building up on the equator. And at some point they'll get too heavy and they will release their rainfall back down to the surface. This is where we find the tropical rainforests. So this is known as convectional rainfall and it happens most days. It's a fairly repetitive pattern. Now because we're, <coughs> the sun's rays are very intense here, temperatures would probably average around about 30 degrees centigrade during the day. Um, and they wouldn't actually drop that much at night because we've got cloud cover here trapping in the heat. It also means that it probably wouldn't get too much hotter than 30 degrees because likewise the cloud block the sun. Um, so it will stay at around about 30. But that's the hottest day in the British Isles that you can probably imagine. OK. The air has risen and it's hit the top of the atmosphere just here. It's now got one of two options. It will either move north or it will move south. We're going to focus on the northern hemisphere. Um, so as the air moves north, it will start to cool. That's because it's moved, its distance is further from the equator. And as it starts to cool, it will sink back down towards the Earth's surface, creating high pressure. So we end up with a band of high pressure here. Now, the opposite happens when the air sinks. The moisture inside the air would evaporate off to give a nice clear sky. Nice blue sky and a lot of sunshine. OK, and that's why we get the deserts just here. Now, the Tropic of Cancer here at, at pretty much 30 degrees north is not that far away from the equator. The sun's rays are still very intense here, so temperatures would probably hit around about 50 degrees C. Warmer than the equator because you've not got that cloud cover blocking out the sun. 
you've got the direct sunshine here. So very, very hot. It would also mean that it would become very cold at night because you've also not got the cloud cover trapping in the heat so it can escape back out to space. OK, so the Earth has sunk down to the Earth's surface and it has two options. It can either head south, back towards the equator, or north, in the direction of the poles. You might notice here that we have just created a cell, and we'll talk about that later. Let's move up to the North Pole. At the North Pole, the air is sinking because it is cold. As it sinks, it creates high pressure at the surface. And once again, any moisture in the air will evaporate off to give a clear sky and sunny conditions. As the air hits the surface, it's got one option, and that is to go south. So the air will travel south. It will meet the air coming up from the tropics. So the warm air coming up from the tropics meets the cold air coming down from the North Pole, and they can't mix. It means that the air rises. And the same thing happens here as what happened at the equator. The moisture in the air will cool down, it will condense, and it will form cloud. And eventually, once again, we'll get rainfall. The air has now got, again, one of two options. It can either move south, back towards the tropics, or it can move north towards the poles. And this completes three cells. We have a cell here, which we call the Hadley cell. A cell here, the feral cell. And a cell here, the polar cell. So we've created three cells of air movement. And what you notice is when the air is rising, you end up with low pressure. When it's sinking, high pressure. So here, we would have low pressure, and here, high pressure. This makes total sense when you think about it, because the UK is at around about 60 degrees latitude. There's the UK, and we actually get a fair amount of cloud and rain, and that's because the air is being forced to rise at this particular point. OK, so we've got the three-cell model. Um, Bearing in mind, obviously, the conditions here at 60 degrees north, we're much further from the equator, so temperatures are not going to be in the 30s or the 50s. They're going to be more like, as an average, a yearly average, 15 degrees. And obviously at the poles here, where we've got the sinking air and the clear sky, it's going to be bitterly cold. So anything less than zero degrees. OK, so that is the atmospheric circulatory system. The other thing we need to talk about is surface winds. Surface winds are these uh, are shown by these arrows here. These arrows are the winds on the surface. Rather than these ones in the upper atmosphere, we're looking at these ones here on the surface. So we can see the arrows going in that direction. So let me just draw it onto the diagram here. Uh, that arrow is going in that direction. Draw it onto the diagram there. And this one travelling south, like this. OK. Now, the Earth spins, and um, this is known as the Coriolis force. And so our air is not going to travel in straight lines like this. It's going to actually be deflected. The best way for me to explain this is for you to imagine a roundabout. Here we have a roundabout, and the roundabout is going um, anti-clockwise like this. If you imagine that you are stood on the roundabout, and you've got a friend over here. So you're going round on the roundabout. And when you get to this point here, you're in direct line with your friend, you're going to throw them a ball. So the ball is being thrown and they receive it. Now the time it's taken for you to throw the ball and for them to catch it, you have spun round. So you're now here when they catch the ball. It gives the impression that the ball has moved to the right. It hasn't. We have thrown it in a straight line, but because you've moved, it looks like the ball has moved to the right. And that same thing happens when we look at these surface winds here. So this wind here, going in that direction, a northerly direction there, would actually be deflected to the right. So what we end up with are surface winds towards the right. 
We call these the southwesterlies because they are moving from the southwest towards the northeast. So they're known as the southwesterly winds. And here's us, as you would notice here, we get a lot of southwesterly winds, and that's why. These arrows here, the same thing happens. Now, for me to explain this, I'm going to turn the diagram around, not to confuse you, but to try and make things a little bit easier. The same thing happens. Wind is deflect deflected to the right, so it would actually travel in that direction. And the same here at the North Pole, it would be deflected to the right, like that. Okay, so to put our diagram back, what you see now is we have got at the equator here, um, the winds are coming from the northeast, so we call these the north easterly winds. From here, they're coming from the south, <coughs> from the southwest, and again from here, from the polar area, they're coming from the northeast again. And that explains our surface winds. And that explains why in the UK we get a lot of wind coming from the southwest. It's our most um, predominant wind. It tends to pick up a lot of moisture as it crosses the Atlantic and then it drops that moisture on the UK, which is why we have a, a, a wetter western side. Um, and when we have the cold air coming down from the northeast, mixing with that, um, that warm air from the southwest, we get that uh, frontal rainfall is what it's called, where the warm air lifts up and cools condenses to form cloud and rain. So that explains the general atmospheric system with the three cells, and it also explains the surface winds that we get. Okay.